guys. On today's show, I'm going to talk about an underappreciated topic uh, that can really make or break the outcome of your wine, and that is fermentation temperature. And depending on the type of wine that you're making, it's not always a one-size-fits-all solution. So um, I guess I'll start with red wines. Um, usually with a red wine, you'd ferment on the actual grape skins to extract um, the color and you want to extract some tannin from those seeds and skins to get kind of the traditional red wine um, characteristics that you'd want and if you're just to ferment a red wine just kind of let it go um, what's probably going to happen is you're going to end up with a pretty light bodied um, red wine and you're not going to get that deep color that you want so what you want to do um, with those is you want to pump the temperature up a little bit and the temperature that you're going to want to achieve is anywhere between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the closer you get towards the high end of that spectrum, the more color and the more tannin you're going to pull out. Um, the more reliably you're going to run that wine all the way dry, which is what you want to do. And of course, the lower you get, um, less color, less tannin, which maybe that's something that you want. And um, to do that, you can do some things. You can obviously put like a little heat lamp next to your wine. Um, something I like to use is one of these little seed heaters if you're just doing a six gallon batch. Um, so you wrap one of these seed heaters around the bucket with a bungee cord and these will probably give you about eight to 10 degrees over whatever the temperature of your room is. So um, one of these, you could pretty much just leave it turned on and be fine. Um, if you're not getting the temps that you want, you can uh, throw a blanket over the wine because the, the yeast itself will produce a little bit of heat and that might get you where you want. And if you really want to get fancy, you can buy these little uh, thermostats that just have a plug on them. So whether you use like your, uh, your seed heater or some other form of heater, um, you can set your temperature probe. Say you want to set it at 80 degrees and it'll kick on if it goes below that, it'll kick off if it goes above that. So a pretty cool little thing for a reasonable price on um, Amazon. That one's made by Baylight. Um, if you're making your red wine from a kit and, you're, and you don't have skins, um, it's not quite as important to aim for those high temperatures, but you still might want to be up around 75 um, just to assure that that wine runs all the way dry because any um, residual sugar left after your primary fermentation is a recipe for bad bugs, bad microbes trying to um, spoil that wine. Um, so that's pretty much the very basics for um, red wine temperature. If you're making a fruit wine, um, you're going to want to do the exact opposite. Um, so, so, and same goes for a white wine usually, where you actually want to retain that fruitiness um, which at the high temperatures will um, kind of blow off the wine because it's actually volatile. So imagine like if you're smelling that fruity smell, um, that smell that's going in your nose is escaping from that wine and it's never coming back. So at the high temps, it just kind of evaporates it all right off of there. So the red wines, uh, the fruit wines, this is an apple. You want to keep them low and some people go even as low as 50 degrees F. Um, to somewhere around 65 degrees F and it's a little bit of a slippery slope because cold is good but you also risk um, stressing the yeast out which could cause problems like um, hydrogen sulfide so one recommendation if you go low cold temperature is to use um, a yeast like Merovin distinction and uh, what those yeasts do is they, they're, they virtually produce no hydrogen sulfide, which is that um, rotten egg smell, which can really wreck a wine. And it's manageable, but it's something you don't want to have to deal with. So cold with whites and fruits to retain that fruity um, smell. Um, be very careful on your yeast selection. Make sure that your yeast can handle the cold temperatures. And then the next question might be, how can you achieve the cold temperatures in just your house? And there's a couple ways you can do it pretty easily. Um, one thing I do is I'll take just a bin like this and fill the bin with water. And I will um, 
throw my carboy in there um, or a bucket if you're open fermenting. And just every morning I'll swap out these uh, ice bombs, I call them. So throw a few one or two liter bottles um, into here and monitor the temps and uh, just at, like I said, every morning just swap them out, throw the other ones in the freezer, throw the new ones in. And you should be able to keep pretty low temps that way and it's really pretty easy to do. Um, the other thing is if you have an extra refrigerator laying around, um, you can turn your refrigerator up and you can probably reach somewhere around 50 degrees with that. Um, and that, that'll work pretty good, but again, um, with the wrong yeast at the cold temperatures, you're very, very uh, much flirting with hydrogen sulfide problems. So the lesson is, there is just always um, monitor your wine, especially during primary fermentation. Now, when your fermentation is all over and you're moving into the aging period, all these rules I just said um, go out the window. So whether it be white or red during the aging period, you're looking at more of a um, 60 to 70 degrees is where you want to stay. You don't want to stay warm because you don't want to promote the growth of um, bad microbes. Um, so hopefully coming into the um, Chilean wine season, this will help you guys out. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the little subscribe button in the bottom corner. Um, and if you want to be notified about videos, hit the little bell and you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. So good luck on your wine. And um, if you have any questions, like I said, post them in the comments and I'll try to get to them.